Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this vlog you'll be joining me while I read the new Patrick Ness book which is called Burn which I got today. So I think this book released yesterday or today it's the 8th of May at the moment so this is really really fresh and I am just so excited for this to open it up and show you as well and just more Patrick Ness books. I'm so happy. He's one of my favourite authors of all time. If you haven't checked him out before, go and do that. Anyway, we're going to kick this off with opening up this. I did pre-order this because I wanted the hardback and also because I wanted it pretty much on release day. Okay. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a weird smudge on the cover of mine though, but hey, you expect that with Amazon. The back just says, how does the world end? It ends in fire. This is so gorgeous. Oh, what does it look like underneath? It's got the lovely red on the spine. Again, my copy is a little bit banged up. Mm, look at it. Anyway, I'm going to read you the blurb of this and then we're going to get straight into the vlog. I'm so excited for this. Here we go. So, this dragon Casimir has more to him than meets the eye. Sarah can't help but be curious about him, an animal who supposedly doesn't have a soul, but is seemingly intent on keeping her safe from the brutal attentions of Deputy Sheriff Emmett Kelby. Casimir knows something she doesn't. He has arrived at the farm because of a prophecy. A prophecy that involves a deadly assassin, a cult of dragon worshippers, two FBI agents, and somehow Sarah Dewhurst herself. From the best-selling author of the Chaos Walking Trilogy comes a heart-stopping story of fanaticism, hope, and impossible second chances set in a world on the brink of its own destruction. Sign me up. I can't wait to start this. I might even start it today. Until then. Good morning and happy Saturday. I thought I would give you a reading update for Burn because I am about 80 odd pages or so into it at the moment. So I'm just going to pop you here. Uh, yes, I'm still in my PJs. Don't really know what to tell you. It's Saturday. It's a lazy day. Well, at least the first few hours of it are. So there's that. But anyway, Burn, where am I up to? How's it going? Like I said, I'm actually up to page 81, which is chapter 6, and I am really liking it so far. So yesterday I actually watched Patrick Ness's live stream chat on Instagram about this because he was spruiking it for release and all of that, and something that he said really makes sense and I understand his writing style just that little bit more now. If you aren't aware, hi, I'm a major Patrick Ness fan. Some of his books are my absolute all-time favourites and I will always recommend The Chaos Walking Trilogy, those three books, read them, they're amazing, as well as Release, that one just it hit hard. That was beautifully written. But some of his other works didn't quite get there for me. And I wouldn't say he's a hit or miss author for me because I still love reading everything that he puts out. It's just different stories of his speak to different parts of me. So getting back to watching him on the live yesterday, the topic of reboots and basically just adding more to series when you don't necessarily have to came up and he said how he loves to challenge himself and that part of his writing euphoria is to be scared going into something or I don't know if scared is the right word but challenge himself that much that he is going into uncharted territory for himself and that it is unfamiliar. So after hearing that it really clicked in my brain like that's why all his books are so different and they have different tones and settings and fantastical elements and that sort of thing just because he is constantly challenging himself. So diving into this one, the same thing. It's different to what he's written before. It's fantasy, but it's set in the real world. So it's not like the Chaos Walking trilogy where you're on an entirely new planet. Having said that, it doesn't necessarily feel like Release and The Crane Wife either because this one has actual dragons in it. So anyway, after that really deep dive, my initial thoughts. I'm not sure if I said in the introduction that this will be spoiler free, but hey, this is spoiler free. So the main thing that I've picked up so far that I'm really, really loving is the representational aspect in the time period that this is set in and the racial elements that are already coming through and how they impact the main character. So we have Sarah, whose mother was dark skinned and her father is light skinned. And she she cops a lot because of that 
especially from the deputy sheriff, I think he is. He's just a butthead already. And then you have her friend Jason, who is Japanese. And since this is set in the 1950s, like you've just had the world wars and everything. So again, he's also copping a lot, even though he was actually born in America. So he identifies as an American citizen. So yeah, already props to Patrick Ness for opening up that discussion. As for the dragon element, loving that so far. I also love the shift in perspective as well because this has not just like the one point of view. We're getting a little bit of everyone, which is creating this atmosphere that is really easy to dive into. So up to chapter six, keen to read some more of this. And that's how things are currently looking. Uh, hello. Okay, so same day, just a little while later, it's about nearly 2.30. I am up to page, let's see, 115, chapter 8. So it's going really well. We're set up on the couch right now because I've just been lounging for the last hour or so. And now I'm sleepy and I need to fix that because I still have things to do. Also, if you can hear Evie in the background, she's just playing with her toys. So to build upon my thoughts from the last check-in, I'm really loving how quickly this world has been set up, how easily distinguished the timeline is and the time frame of it and the atmosphere of it all. Patrick Ness just does a really good job of dropping you into a world and making it clear where you stand and what's going on right from the get-go. So he's doing great with that so far in this one too. Like I said in the last little clip as well, we are following multiple people and multiple like points of view in this and I am just super keen for all of those things to line up and pull together because he did mention that this is a standalone, so it has moved along pretty quick so far. Like, there hasn't been a lull in the story yet, and like I said, I'm, you know, eight chapters in, and already things are happening. Would you expect that anyway? But there are some books I find that nothing really happens until the end. Those are objectively badly paced books, but this one has just dropped you right in and you take off with the story, and I love that so very, very much. Also, just for something fun that we can compare at the end of this experience to see if it still holds up, my favourite character so far is Casimir, which I think you sort of guessed at in the last clip, but he is just hilariously, what's the word, blasé about a lot of stuff while also just intelligent and cunning and humorous all in the one bundle. So I am really, really loving him. Also, he's a dragon, so how would he not be a potential favourite? For those of you that might be reading this at the same time as me, I am up to the part where Nelson and Malcolm are at the campsite or they've just left the campsite. So, weirdly vague references for those of you that are reading this at the same time as I am. Oh, look, Evie joined us. Hey, how you doing? You can tell that she's my daughter because she also has red hair. Anyway... I have to finish making a cheesecake and I've never made one before so that could be a complete disaster but I'm gonna give it a go. Evie's probably... what are you gonna do? You were laying in your planter box for a while there. Yeah. I don't know what Evie's gonna do. She'll, she'll find something to destroy and hopefully I will read more of this today but I'll let you know. I'll let you know how I go. <laughs> that buzzing is in my videos in the background. It's my fridge! Hello, it's check-in time. I just witnessed something with my eyeballs while I was reading this book that threw me a little bit, which I also can't really tell you about because it's a spoiler, but just know that it happened on page 155 and it shocked me. It threw a bit of a spanner in the works. It has also made it more interesting again, and we're just stepping up the story again. So, going well. And yeah, I don't really have anything else to add at this point in time. I have to cook dinner. So that's what I'm gonna go do right now, and then hopefully read some more later on. Okay, so dinner's in the oven, and I am 
reading more of this while it cooks. What else am I going to do? And I have a bad feeling about the fate of one of the characters. There is a character in this who is witnessing some things happening that they don't agree with. And I feel like Ness is hinting at some future tragedy. Also, if you can hear the crunch, Phoebe's eating her dinner. But yeah, I feel like there is a tragedy in the works and Patrick Ness does tragedy so well. He intertwines it into his storylines really, really well, even though the ending of his books always have a dash of hope in them. But I am worried for this character. I was also thinking about how this book is written and how it does jump all over the place in telling the story and you see from all these different points of view, all these different perspectives. And I've realized that it's sort of snapshots. It's moments of each part in the story and of each character. And this whole novel is made up of snapshots of all these different things happening. And it's a big puzzle basically that's going to get pieced together. I will admit that around the like 150 page mark, I was struggling with this a little bit because it was before I realized that this book is just a build up of moments. And I was sort of struggling with that a little bit, but now that I have sort of come to terms with the writing style of it, I'm getting back into it again. So like I said, I'm on page 175 and I have a bad feeling for a character that I like and that I feel sympathy for, for the situation that they're currently in, because it's a tricky one. I know that that is super, super vague, but I don't want to spoil this for you, so you should probably just read the book yourself and when you get to page 175, you might know what I'm talking about. So I am two pages off of chapter 13 and I'm keen to continue on. Okay, it's been like two pages and I am scared for another character entirely now. This is what Patrick Ness does to me. You worry about everyone because he does not pull punches and he does not not kill off characters. To which I have one word to say and that is Manchi. If you've read the Chaos Walking trilogy, you know it still hurts. Anyway, in Burn we have an assassin that is actually killing people and at this point in time is not reframing from killing people who are in their way. Which is very refreshing because I feel like we have a lot of YA books out at the moment that have the assassin type character as the main character but you don't actually see them kill anyone because they don't do that anymore or it happens off screen or they suddenly grow morals even before you see them kill a single person. This is all sounding a little bit dark but basically assassins kill people and the assassin in this book is killing people and I'm scared for a character. I hope these check-ins are making sense and yeah Patrick Ness has a great way of making us fear for every single character. Cool. <laughs> time no check-in. It is Thursday and today is a brilliant day. The main reason being because I became an auntie for the second time today. My sister and my brother-in-law had their beautiful little baby girl and I'm so happy. But while I'm here updating you on that, I just thought that I would give you a quick reading update as well and let you know that where this marker is, it's sort of like halfway, three quarters of the way through. Uh, that's where the book broke page 256 the book broke so if you've read a patrick ness book you'll know that he doesn't really mind going in weird directions with his novels and yep it took it there this book is reminding me a lot of release one of his recently published novels and i really really liked that one but with that one it did do weird things, but it really pulled together and worked. This is doing weird things, but I think that when I get to the end of it, it's all going to pull together in my brain, and I'm really hoping that it is 
great because right now it's weird but it's wonderfully weird and it's very Patrick Ness. So yes I am still liking it. It's not exactly what I was expecting it to be. Basically at that point page 256 a lot of shit goes down and it goes down very fast. So the pacing of this novel is sort of like a tumble downhill. It picks up pace really quick and then it just goes and then these characters get spat into a different scenario and it sort of pulls up short a little bit. But yeah, as for where I am up to now, I'm on page 298. I think I have just under 100 pages to go by the looks of it. And I will say that I am enjoying the character of Malcolm more. Sarah, I feel like, doesn't have a lot of depth to her. I, I know it's there and I do like her as a character, but I want to see more from her. I want her to have her big moment, which I'm hoping that we're building up towards. And yeah, Casimir, still A+. He just <laughs> keeps on providing the sass and the sort of humour to the story. And yeah, that's where we're currently at. So I've got less than 100 pages to go. I have the next three days off. I've been moving my hands a lot in this clip. Sorry. I'm just, I'm feeling a lot today. Today is a great day. But yeah, I have the next three days off and I'm really looking forward to consuming more of this novel and hopefully finishing it during that time. So happy Thursday. Hello there and happy Saturday. It's about 7.30 at night and I have not very much of this left to go. So I thought that I would try and get this finished here right now and then we can do some thoughts wrap this up, let you know how it all went pretty much. Before I tell you how much of the book I have left, we're going to set the mood a little bit and we're going to burn a candle. Right down here I have my TBR card, which is basically just a two burn candle stack at the moment. So what do I feel like? This one. We're going to burn Claim the Stars. This is a Spark and Sparrow candle. We're going to put this candle on and we're all going to cry while the really pretty glitter on top just burns away to nothing. Okay, so let's see, how many pages left do I have? I am currently on page 366 and the book goes until, let's try and see without spoiling ourselves. Oh, there's an epilogue. Um, 383. So I really don't have much of this left to go. I've not been reading this as quickly as I would have liked, I think. May is just a really shitty reading month for me. I'm not blaming the book, I'm blaming the month because last month I smashed it out of the park with all my reading and this month nothing is happening, nothing at all. So before we finish this off and discuss it, there is one other little moment that happened in this that I want to acknowledge before we move on and it's page 320 where Patrick Ness just gets you. He just gets your feelings right in the heart and it's beautiful and it nearly made me cry. So I'm going to share that section on this page that really stood out for me and do that without spoiling you. So we have two characters in this scene interacting with each other and the first one says, do you want to love? Answer me that. The second one lowered their hand. I've always wanted to love. They looked down. I never thought I was allowed. Then at least let me tell you you are, that you can, that you will. And then the scene moves on a little bit and the second character says, my name is blah. The first one says, it's nice to meet you. And the second one says, you can't imagine how lonely I've been. And the first one says, yes, I actually can. It was a moment that deserved a little page tab. It made me really feel for the characters in this scene a whole lot more and it just helped to develop one of the characters more and I loved it. I loved it so much. So now we are going to read the last under 20-ish pages of this and then I'm going to check back in with you and discuss how I went. Cue the reading montage. <laughs> back on while we talk about this so it looks all pretty again. Okay, so Burn by Patrick Ness. I just finished this and I have no idea what to rate it. I think we're gonna have to sit on this one for a few days because there was a lot in this and there were things that I really liked as well and it's typical Patrick Ness. Like he is not afraid to go 
weird in his books and to go to strange places within his novels. This definitely went there. What I can say right now is that I did enjoy most of this. My favourite character ended up being Malcolm, which surprised me because at the start didn't mesh with him whatsoever, but at the end there I really, really liked him. There are discussions on religion and cult type things and society not accepting same-sex couples in this time because like we know this is set in the 1950s so there was that really good discussion too. Sarah was a little bit of a non-event for me. She started off strong but then I feel like because we were looking everywhere and going into all these different characters she just sort of didn't really stand out for me a whole heap which was a bit of a disappointment because in the blurb like she sounds like one of the key people and she is one of the key players in this Sarah's storyline ended up giving me sort of the rest of us just live here vibes which is another one of Patrick Ness's books hi like I said I'm a fan while the overall tone of the story lent more towards release. I absolutely loved this book. I didn't love The Rest of Us Live Here as much. I liked the concept of it, but eh. Whereas this amazed me and I loved that this had a lot of elements from this in it. Whereas Burn is more of a mythic type story, there is a prophecy based plot in this, which I like how that ends up coming around. But yes, definitely an individual story in itself. I will say as well that I felt like Malcolm's relationship got more screen time or on the page time than what Sarah's did and Malcolm's relationship also fleshed him out as a character more and made me love him so very much whereas because Sarah's didn't develop and not as much time was put on Sarah I feel like I didn't really care for her relationship because I think that this story's true hero is Malcolm which I didn't expect going into this when I first heard about this book and there was like a brief sort of blurby synopsis thing posted online it sounded like it was her book but this is everyone's book I think that's the easiest way to describe it this has a little bit of everyone in it and I stand by what I said earlier on in this vlog that this book is screenshots and moments from everyone pieced together to create a whole story. Having said that, those are my very, very fresh thoughts on Burn by Patrick Ness. Like I said, I don't know what to rate this yet because I have literally just finished it, so expect a book babble to come in a few days, probably in a week or two, let's be honest, of me with more settled thoughts and for an actual rating for you. For right now, I will give it a temporary rating of three and a half stars, I think. In all honesty, not my favourite Patrick Ness book, but also not my least favourite by any means. I think we've been very spoiled with what this author has been putting out the last couple of years, and there were definitely aspects of this book that I still really, really enjoyed, but it's probably sitting around that three and a half stars for me, which is still a very, very good book. Oh, has my camera been crooked this whole time? I hope not. Anyway, this was my 10th Patrick Ness book that I have ever read, and I will still be reading everything by him because I love him as an author so very, very much. And expect a book babble soon on Burn. Thank you so much for tuning in to this reading vlog. I hope it made some sort of sense there, even though I couldn't go into spoilers, and that you got a general feel of how I enjoyed slash experienced this book. So don't forget to comment down below if you'll be picking up this book, and I will see you in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.